Hello, my name is Jesse Serrano. I'm a junior student here at Missouri S&T, and I'm going to talk to you today about SecPro2, which is a program developed by Dr. Libra for section analysis. It's very helpful when going through the class mechanics of materials and going through anything in statics that you might not remember. All right, this is SecPro2, and I'm going to give you guys an introduction on how to use the program. In this video, I'm going to introduce you guys to the program. I'm going to show you how it's applicable, so why you want to use this. And I'm going to use this program to do a few examples. This program was developed by Dr. Nicholas Libra. It will perform certain section analyses, such as centroid, moment of inertia, and section modulus. It's also good for forces acting on these sections, so you can do things like stress analysis and more circle. I found this to be very effective when setting for tests or doing homework. Um, it's helpful for finding any issues that you might be having on your homework assignments. Um, it's also very useful, again, for finding things like stress, more circle, and some other section properties you might be having issues with. And I'm going to show you guys how to do a few examples. All right, guys, so now that we have the program installed on our computer, we're going to go ahead and open it up using the shortcut on our desktop. Sometimes this will ask you for your name and email. Go ahead and just type your name and then your school email address in there. Hit enter. Okay, now we have the program open. You can see right here is your workspace. This will display everything you need to know. Over here is what you're going to use to build the sections. This area will display all the information. I'm going to go through each section quickly. File will allow you to open and save programs. So as you make sections, you can save them to different file types and open them for later. Help, this will take you to the online help. And about will tell you some details about the program, such as what version you're using. This online help is a PDF version that I've made. Right here, this is for creating new figures. Here's a shortcut to open, so you can open an existing file that you've saved. It's allowed to save your current figures, so if you want to go put that in a folder, you can. Pan, this will allow you to move around your workspace. So as you create sections, you can drag workspace around to get a better view of it. Zoom in, this will allow you to zoom in closer to your workpiece so you can look at specific details. So you want to see how two pieces are connecting or if there's a small gap in there by accident, you can double check that. Zoom out allows you to do just the opposite. You can zoom out to get a better feel of the entire workpiece. Here are your units. This will allow you to change from the US customary units or SI standard units. Zoom extend. This more or less will take you to a home view of your section. So it'll put a border around it so you can see the entire section readily without having to try and zoom in and out. And here's a shortcut to the help menu. All right, now as far as adding sections, right here we have the different shapes and predefined sections that we can use to create. So rectangular section is a standard section you use quite often. You can start by adding the position so you can see these dots around the side here. You got one, two, three, and so on. Um, this is your origin point for the shape. So if I want to move this point from the lower left hand corner, I'll select two, and I want to move it two units in the x direction away from the origin on our build space here. You can see zero, zero. This is the origin of the space. I'm going to move it four in the y direction. And I'll just leave the standard dimensions here. Click add section over here to the zoom extend. Now we can see the shape readily right here. And right here we can see it's moved four units away from the origin in the y direction and two units in the x direction. If you go over to the section properties here, you're gonna see this as 27 and 29. That's because this is the difference to the centroid of the shape. So it's 29, I'm sorry, it's 27 in this direction and 29 in this direction. Okay. To go ahead and clear this workspace, we can double click on our shape and select delete. It'll ask us if we'd like to and go ahead and say yes. Okay, so that was just a simple square shape. You can also create circular sections, triangular sections, uh, quarter circle sections. There are a number of predefined sections on here as well. This would be a hollow square section. You have an L shape here an I beam or a W section and right here we have a T section. 
When creating something like one of these predefined sections, you'll get a few more options here. You have your standard position function like we had before. For this I-beam, we're going to go ahead and select a specific section. These are all predefined sections that are actually used in the real world and will also be listed on homework assignments. What we're going to do here is select a specific one to work with. I'm going to look for 16 by 40. Select that. And right here, you can see all of the dimensions for this shape. Now, I want to make sure that I put the bottom of this at the origin. So I'm going to set my Y to 8 units. Add section. Center this. As you can see here, very bottom, at the origin for the center of the shape is at 0. So now we can clearly see that Y bar is at 8 and the area is 11.8. If we select this How button here, we can see how it's getting these answers. Now because this is just a single shape, it's just going to calculate the area automatically for this one shape, so it's fairly simple. <clears throat> right here we can see where it's getting y bar using these equations. x bar is 0 because the origin line here is on the same axis as the centroid. We'll close out of that. Now looking at the moment of inertia, we can click the how button here. And it's going to show us our table of values for everything we might want to know about this section. Use the scroll bar to see the end here. And right here are the equations used to get our answer. Right here it shows the polar moment of inertia as well. Alright, and the last one right here would be the section modulus. Similar to all the other ones, it'll show the equation used to get the final answer. Um, but it doesn't have a table of values like needed for the other sections. Okay, and right down here, back in the properties of subsection, you can see that we can change the angle, the Y and C, so these are more or less origin points for it. So if I wanted to move this away from the X axis, I could do that from the, the uh, center of this shape. Um, same thing with the dimensions we've already done. Okay, right down here you can see we have a few more options. We have clear and reset, so if I want to remove this shape, I can select this and it'll just delete everything on the plane. Um, do note that this will remove everything on here while hitting delete over here will only delete specific sections. We have stress analysis here. Select this button. Right here we have our section. On this side we're going to get our bending stress. Over here we're going to get our stress by axial force. Then over here this is going to be the total normal stress acting on the section. So I'm going to put some arbitrary values in here. So let me just type in a few numbers. And as you can see here, the bending stress is going through the centroid of the point. Right here is where all the axial force is acting. And here's the two combined. If we want to change this, so let's say that this should be in the other direction, we can put a subtraction symbol here, and it'll flip it. Same thing goes for the moment. We can also see stress at a specific point by looking at the Y version right here. This is the distance from the centroid. What we do is we can put two units from the centroid, hit enter. What it's gonna do is it'll display the values that you're looking for right down here. All right, we'll close out of that now. One of the last things we'll show right here is a Moore circle. You can select this and it'll show you the Moore circle for this section. Show the moment of inertia here is the original. There's also the principal axis and then the rotation of the section. Right here displays our section and it'll also be rotated. It'll display that here as well. And then here's the display area for the circle itself. We can type values in here. So we can put at 10 degrees, hit enter, and it'll move the section 10 degrees. It'll also adjust the Morse circle accordingly. You can also use these up and down arrows to change things periodically as well. Hitting the show button here will take it back to its origin or the principle. And that's about it for the Morse circle. Okay, now that I've shown all the sections from this program, I'm going to go ahead and do a few examples. To close the program, select the close button down here. 